Well hello again everybody. Well today's video is just going to be a very quick one so that I can show you finishing off this spindle motor controller. Now some of you left in the comments that I left you hanging at the end of the last video and I didn't actually show you the spindle motor running with our new pulse width modulation controller. Well you know that I do like to play little naughty tricks on you guys but I'm afraid this time it wasn't actually intentional. So just to explain that, I'm sure that some of you have actually recorded your own videos and you've used editing software on your computer to edit them. Well unfortunately, part way through the editing process, sometimes the, the video footage starts to become unstable and uh, I was having a problem that the computer was starting to crash. And it was actually taking me several restarts to actually do anything with it and even make even minor edits to the footage. So I actually made the decision just to upload it because I thought I was in risk of losing everything. So that's why I did that. It wasn't a trick this time. Well, I hope that that didn't subtract from anybody's enjoyment too much. And I've tried to come back quickly just to finish off. So let's just go ahead and connect up our external power supply. I'm afraid I still haven't got around to uh, changing out this thermal fuse device on here. It's only 3 amp. We could have done with something a bit better but I will change it out when I get a moment. Now I'm afraid I'm not actually going to show us doing any cutting with the uh, little CNC today and uh, the reason for that is simply because I'm not really particularly familiar with the software yet so I'm hoping that over the Christmas break I can actually spend a bit of time figuring out how to uh, how to program this CNC and maybe do a bit of cutting with it. That's the plan. Well I think my favourite part of this project so far has really been making this little uh, 24 volt power supply. Well I say making it, what I actually mean is we bought this 15 amp power supply off Amazon but I did 3D print this end cap for it and put the mains IEC connector on it, a fuse and also a 24 volt output. Oh and of course an illuminated rocker switch because yes lights are good. And uh, I actually thought that this worked quite nicely. It makes you wonder if anybody actually does manufacture end caps for these power supplies because you can buy these power supplies relatively cheaply. It is quite high powered at 15 amps and it is just a nice way to finish them off and potentially protect you from uh, high voltages. Anyway, let's plug that in. Okay, so I can see that the little power indicator LED is actually illuminated on our spindle control PCB, so that means that we're getting 24 volts. And our gerbil control board has also got some indicator lights on it, because I think that lights up whenever you plug it into the USB. So I think I did make a mistake last time. I said that the, uh, the actual gerbil control board was actually powered from the 24 volt supply. I don't think it is. I actually think it derives its power for its microprocessor and its logic. I think it actually derives that from the USB, but the 24 volts is actually used to run the XYZ stepper motors. So we've got our little LED up here, which is actually wired in series with the Opto Isolator. Because if you remember from last week, I am using an Opto Isolated gate driver for the MOSFET. And of course the purpose of that is because we want the rise and fall time of the MOSFET when it's switching on and off. We want that to be very fast so that the, uh, this MOSFET time spends as much of its time as possible. It wants to be either switch fully on or switch fully off. We don't want it transitioning from uh, high to low or low to high. So yes, yeah, so that's the purpose of this MOSFET driver. So what we need to do is I just need to start some software up now and uh, hopefully we should be able to send some serial commands to it and switch the motor on and off. Now I've actually been inside the software and I've made some modifications. Previously the lowest speed that we could run at was 400. But now I've actually built my new speed controller. I've found that we can actually run at a much lower speed. It's the low speed control does seem much more consistent. So I've tweaked the software so now we can run at 100. Now again these numbers are, are purely arbitrary. They don't really have any real speed meaning. The lower number is a lower speed and a higher number is a higher speed. And before we were going between I think it was 400 and 1000 with 1000 being 100% on for the pulse with modulation. So what I've actually done is I've set the lower speed to now 100 
which means I've got better low speed control if I should want it. But I've actually set the maximum speed rather than being 100% full on for pulse width modulation. We're only 8 tenths on now. So this motor isn't going to be running at its full rated power. And uh, the reason for that is because we're still ha really having this balance problem with this uh, little chuck that's on the, the end of the uh, CNC motor. It's, it isn't well balanced. We did have a go at rebalancing it, but I don't think my efforts were uh, good enough. And the problem is when you have small CNC's like this, they're not really very rigid and any vibration that you get will show up in the uh, machining quality of the work. So I purposely decided to just limit the top speed. We may go ahead and limit that. The original top speed for the first motor was about 10,000 RPM. I'm going to take a guess that with 800 here, 8 tenths with the new motor, I suspect we might be getting around 16 or 17,000 RPM. RPM. So I still think it's uh, a realistic and worthwhile improvement. Anyway, let's turn the speed down and uh, switch on. Let's go up in speed. And of course let's go from off to full speed because we should be able to do that. I'm not sure how well it will show up on the camera but we should see the speed indicator lamp here getting brighter and dimmer as the amount of pulse width modulation as the mark to space ratio changes. So as the uh, mark ratio becomes more, as it becomes more on, this should get brighter. Having spent so much time talking about the rise and the fall time for our MOSFET gate, let's go and have a look at how fast it is using this MOSFET driver. So I'm hoping you can see that we've got really nice square waves there and very sharp rise and fall times of just over 80 nanoseconds. If anything that's probably a little bit too fast and we could slow them down a little bit. But I'm not going to. So let's take a look at the switching waveform for our motor now. Well as you can see we're looking at the motor current now and it isn't actually a square wave. It's funny, it, it looks a little bit like a chair with that being the seat of the chair. So it looks as though, well I've got to admit I don't know, I think this the shape of this waveform here, it's when we pull from high to low. I think maybe we've seen something to do with the flyback diode there, but I've got to admit I am by no means certain what that is. I think maybe it's still part of the inductive kickback. But just taking a look at the rising edge here, I can see that there does appear to be very, very little ringing occurring, so I think that's a good sign. This clamping diode does appear to be mainly doing its job. But unfortunately I can't kind of uh, explain this chunk which is cut out of the waveform. So maybe if you can explain that and you understand it, please leave it in the comments because I would like to know. Now with such fast rise and fall times across our MOSFET here, we would expect our MOSFET not to get too hot. And it's totally cold, it's at the same temperature as the framework of the machine, it's, it's got no heat in it at all, it's, it's stone cold. So I think it's fair to say that we have considerably over-engineered our MOSFET driver here and uh, in fact this MOSFET is far bigger than it needs to be. But as I said at the start I use what's in the junk box and uh, it does mean that if we wanted to use a bigger motor still this would have plenty of capacity. Uh, after all this is a 50 amp MOSFET and I think this motor is probably drawing about 2 amps at the moment. Well, I don't think that looks too bad, does it? It looks kind of semi-professional. 
Well, I don't know what you guys have got planned for the Christmas holidays. I'm hoping you all have a good Christmas. It's been a difficult year, hasn't it? I've got to admit, I'm planning on doing some more radio projects and I've got an old television that I want us to play with. So that's what I'm planning on doing over Christmas. If you've got any uh, projects planned, please leave it in the comments. I'd love to know what you're doing. I don't know about you, but it just seems like, I don't know, 10 minutes ago that I actually just put the uh, Christmas decorations back in the loft. I it's funny what they say, isn't it? As you, as you get older, these things seem to come round faster and faster. Well, just before we call this thing done, let's go ahead and uh, let's just measure that motor speed again and see what usable speed we've got. Well, I'm sure you remember we've got to stick on some of these little reflective uh, stickers to use our little sp RPM speed measurement device here. So let me just stick one of them on. Hopefully it won't come off. Oh, I've already got one stuck on. <laughs> Silly me. So I think you guys are going to have to shout out the RPM because I can't really work the computer and the uh, meter at the same time. So uh, if you guys can look at the meter and shout it out as we change the speed, that would help me. Right, let's turn it on first. Let's see what our lowest speed is. Okay, what have we got? 3,000 they said. Okay, 3,000, 3,098. Next speed. Okay, that's taken us to 6,900. So we're at just over 10,000. So that's the speed that the original motor was running at. So can we go faster? Yep, 12,000, 14,000, 16, 17. Okay, so I think we've got to just over 18,000 there, which surprisingly enough, that's about what I guessed it would be. So I'm fairly happy with that. I'm sure that those numbers would have been a bit lower if the motor had some load on it, if it was actually cutting. Um, it's a shame that we couldn't run at the full 20,000 and uh, I didn't put it up to that because the vibration was excessive and the actual noise is quite unpleasant. It's, it's very noisy to run at such a high speed. So here's our original motor. Here's the second motor which I seem to buy in error. And here's a third motor that came with an extended shaft on it and actually cut, cut it down to fit this collet chuck arrangement. Now I've got to admit this project has uh, in some ways been more work than I anticipated. Um, some projects you just get a bit bogged down in. But it was interesting to actually have a go at building this MOSFET driver circuit. Certainly I've learned something about MOSFETs just by playing with this one. But would I do it again? Well, I think the answer is probably no, I wouldn't do it again. I'm really not sure it is worth the effort to do it in the way I've done it. I think what I would do is I would have gone on eBay and uh, I would probably still upgrade the motor, but rather than try to build my own speed controller, I would just go ahead and buy one of these. I think you can buy one of these for probably less than £10. And I did actually test it with this motor and it ran it beautifully. I'll say beautifully, it ran it as well as my speed controller did. And uh, what this has got, it's got a little variable potentiometer on it here. So basically you stick 24 volts at one side, connect your motor to the other, and then you can actually vary the actual uh, speed of the motor using this potentiometer. Now you would have to put a separate switch on this rather than actually deriving the supply from the Gerbil control board here. You'd have to get the supply straight off a separate power supply and you'd also have to manually switch the spindle motor on and off. But I don't think that would be a, a great problem. And as I say, I don't think I'd go to the effort of doing this again if it wasn't for the, uh, for the pleasure of doing it and the learning curve. So maybe if you buy one of these upgraded motors, don't do what I've done. Just buy yourself a cheap speed controller and put a switch on it. That will be quicker and easier and it'll work just as well, to be honest. Well, I think for today that will do. And next time, let's hope we can get back to some vintage electronics repairs. Maybe some old valve radios or something like that. Okay, stop waffling. Bye-bye for now.